Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Retroid Pocket. I picked this up for about a week ago, maybe a little longer than that. And I wanted to talk about uh, basically just the cons of it, and then I'll go into the pros of it in another video. Um, so I picked this up, uh, as you guys may have recalled, I got this from AliExpress when they were having a sale. I got it for a deal, and that's why I picked it up. I paid only about one. 40 ish uh, after all the uh, coupons and stuff. So it was a really good deal. Apparently, there's going to be a Retroid Pocket 5 coming out soon. I don't know when that's going to come out, but it's supposed to be holding on to a Snapdragon processor. Uh, this is a Dimensity processor. This is the Pro version. Uh, they also have just a Retroid Pocket 4 version, which is more or less the same from my understanding, although I don't have it, so I can't really tell you that exactly uh, as truth. So anyways, I wanted to talk about the cons in this video. Uh, don't get it wrong that I, it's not that I don't like the machine. I do like the machine. It's just that I wanted to tell you guys what to expect when you get the machine. So the first con was that there was no SD card. Um, so you're going to have to pick up your own SD card. Uh, and that's one of the cons that I feel, I feel is kind of... It is kind of substantial because you're paying already $200 for the machine and uh, you're having to actually add on quite a bit if you want the machine to be fully operational. So you're going to need an SD card, micro SD card actually, um, as one of the add-ons to the purchase. So you have to think about this. Um, I'm currently using the uh, SD card that I pulled out of my Abernick, uh, but the format is not correct, so I'm not able to put in uh, more uh, of those larger larger games. So when I do the review of the gaming side, you're going to realize that I'm missing quite a few games, and it's because um, I, I just don't have the ability to add it into the system because of the restrictions on the 4 gig of my... I, all I have to do is actually reformat it, but I figure I'll get a bigger SD card so then I can hold um, more... Uh, games on it so I'm not exactly sure what is the maximum capacity of the the uh, SD card that it can handle but from my understanding is at least uh, well from my understanding what I read online is that it can hold 512 so I may go into the 256 or 512 range for the machine just to get it going the next thing is that I wanted to talk about is the bumper pads so they're actually okay. There's nothing wrong. They're springy or whatever, but each press, it has to fully retract in order to register in the game. At least that's from what I've been playing is that I've been, I was playing a uh, Capcom versus SNK. You press it down and you let it go slightly and you press it down again. It doesn't register that movement. It has to be fully depressed and fully, uh, um, well, once it's fully depressed, it registers as one push, and then it doesn't register if you were to like pull it back halfway and then try to press it again. It doesn't register that as a second touch. Uh, that is the other issue. Um, the exterior issue, like nothing really serious, but these grooves are quite deep. Um, nothing really that serious, though. I mean, it, it's just minor, those kind of things. Uh, and then another issue that I feel is an problem with the machine is that you don't get a plug with it and from my understanding is it's probably better to charge it under slow charge and not under fast charge so um, it'll be better that you get a slow charging charger although it may take a while to charge it the next issue that I feel it is kind of weird though so this system here I'm powering it up right now um, and you'll see here once I have it all started. Uh, and so you have to factor in all these little mini things. So if you don't have a charger, you're going to have to add that in. If you don't have the SD card, you're going to have to add that in. And then uh, to get this machine working really well, the other thing is, uh, well, from what I, my research is, is that you're going to have to get apps. And the apps that you're going to need to get are costing some money too so there's all these little add-ons for the apps um, of course if you already purchased it through an android device uh, you can just add it on because you're just using the uh, android uh, system to basically 
buy your apps for this machine. And that is another thing too that I feel is a bit weird. I mean, of course you have your your keypad or your you know your joysticks here to operate the system, but in reality this is just an Android device and it is just an Android phone basically. It's just that you're not having that capability of calling, but I guess if you really wanted to figure out a way you could probably get it done uh, so that this thing could actually uh, you know at least make calls or use it as a, like a text message device or you can text message other people uh, via the Android apps so I mean with that being said I mean if you already have a good Android device and you wanted to do mimic something like this retroid pocket you could probably get it done with your Android device is just that you will be killing your phone pretty quickly and if you don't really care about that uh, you could probably set this whole thing up on your phone get it to work and it'll be perfectly fine and you could do the same functions as that uh, because I don't see anything special on here that's just specific for this retroid pocket uh, all of these apps you could have downloaded it onto your phone um, whether you use the APK method or through the Google Play Store. Other than that, I mean, uh, another big issue is, is that uh, because it doesn't come with anything, you're, you're basically having to do the work. If you're lazy like me, it is kind of like a tiresome thing um, because I never had any of the games, so I had to go out there, download everything that I wanted. Uh, and that took some time, especially because my internet here is really bad. So uh, that really took days just to get some games operating. Um, other than that, I mean, and the whole thing about loading it onto the system, it does get a little bit uh, quirky here and there. Uh, I haven't figured out everything yet. Uh, because certain things uh, it doesn't pick up from the SD card so I have to figure out why that's not working but anyways overall I those are the biggest issues that I see the uh, gaming wise you're gonna be hit and miss uh, certain games uh, are gonna work certain games are gonna be a little bit more rough on the machine uh, it doesn't say that I mean this machine is not claiming to handle every single game you have to understand that it is an emulator and its limitations are the the hardware itself although the hardware is doing its best to provide um, the best gaming experience but uh, there are some games where it cannot handle and certain ones um, as I can demonstrate maybe for you so one of the games that it can't handle is actually this Oregon Trail game uh, let me just put it there see if uh, see if I can get it to load and um, if you can hear it, it struggles, or at least earlier when I was trying to play it, it was struggling uh, pretty hard with this game. So, or maybe it's working now, I'm not sure. But when it was loading earlier, you could hear the music, it was struggling. But overall, I mean, most of the games that I threw at it, I haven't had any issues. Um, and you can quickly get your Super Nintendo, oh, let me turn down the volume so that way you don't get uh, distracted by the noise, but uh, the Super Nintendo, Nintendo, all the low end stuff uh, here, you can hear it now, it's struggling. And here it's like, when it's loading, it struggles. As you can see here, it's struggling. So this is just one of the things uh, I'm not sure if you can hear that or not, but the game is really lagging. But uh, other than that, I mean, uh, it's not that serious. I mean, you're going to have some games, like I said, it doesn't really matter um, what it, what you're using. You're probably going to get some hiccups here and there. Of course, if you're on a computer, it'd probably be better. But I mean, for the Android device itself, it's actually pretty good at handling all the way up to the Wii. Um, I have some PlayStation 2 games. Uh, those are all working fine, and I'll go through those next time. But as I said, all the, the low-end stuff, um, Super Nintendo below, no problems. Um, 
it just the the higher end stuff it does get a little taxing on the system so uh just be aware of that and then like i said to set it up it is if you're not used to the android system if you're an apple user coming into the android system you may have some uh, troubles with the way the layout is because uh, it does have some mapping that you need to do with your folders I mean, it's not very difficult. If you can operate a Windows computer, you probably will be fine. But uh, just expect that where you're going to be mapping folders, you're going to be pulling folders, making your folders into the SD card. Um, or if you're going to be using the device to load up all your data in there, you could do it that way too. But uh, it all depends on how you want to operate the machine and how much data you need. But other than that, um, I think it's it's not that difficult to get it going. Once you get it going, you'll be fine. Um, but it does take work and it does take days to get this whole thing going. So be aware of that. If you do pick this up, don't expect it to just turn it on uh, and play a game because there will be no games, or at least where I bought it from, there was nothing loaded on here. So, And of course, because it's an Android device too, you can also play Android games um, and those Android games. Uh, I didn't. I had a couple games on here, but I just deleted it because I figure uh, I'd rather just play. Um, you know, the, actually, my main focus right now is to play GameCube games as well as the Nintendo Wii because I've never had one before. And playing some of the games earlier, it is really fun. So um, that's where my main focus is. And I'll be demonstrating those next time. And so next time, I'll show you guys the quality of the picture and the sound for those games and what I have on the system. I don't have a whole bunch of games, but you guys can see and at least get a general idea of how the machine operates. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. That's pretty much all I have for you guys. And if you guys have any questions, comments, leave them down below and I'll see you guys next time. Like, share, subscribe.